and he follows. He's after it, and he grabs it. I hit him, and away he goes as the line cuts the water. It's best to raise the rod high to keep the line from fouling on coral or sea fans. Captain Rick Murphy and welcome to Sportsman's Adventures. We're coming to you from the La Jolla Resort located right here in the heart of Isla Mirada in the fabulous Florida Keys. Now anglers have been coming to the Florida Keys and South Florida for many years creating many fishing memories during that time. And quite a few of those moments were caught on vintage fishing films that were shot right here in the Florida Keys. Now the good news is that the IGFA is where those classic films are kept and they are available for viewing by the public. The museum has over 2,000 vintage fishing films dating all the way back to the 1930s. Now let's go back in time and view some of the greatest treasures the museum has to offer. As the skiff plows through the crystal clear water, a big leopard ray crosses the bow, flapping its wings like a giant bat. And a flock of pelicans fly lazily across the flat. Let's watch them in slow motion. The flats in this area are close inshore, extending right up to the mangroves. Many fishermen use no boats at all, just park their cars and wade out from shore. There's a great fascination about this waiting for bonefish. The man is on his own and he experiences a peculiar sense of peace in the vast quiet of the open sea. It's somewhat like being alone on a wilderness trout stream, a feeling of the primitive, a real closeness to nature. I am using a powerful nine-foot fly rod, a salmon reel carrying 200 yards of Ashaway 14-pound squidding line as backing under my GAF Ashaway fly line and a white streamer fly. The water is shallow and bonefish are very shy, so I wade slowly and quietly, watching. Nope, not a bonefish, just a small shark. Get out of here. And brother, he checks out. Uh-oh, there's a bonefish, no mistake about that. And his tail comes clear out of water as he feeds along the bottom. I try to put that fly in exactly the right spot, close enough so that he'll see it, but not close enough to scare him. He sees it, and he follows. He's after it, and he grabs it. I hit him, and away he goes as the line cuts the water. It's best to raise the rod high to keep the line from fouling on coral or sea fans. The line cuts the water, throwing spray a foot high as the fish goes away at terrific speed and the fly line melts off the reel down into the backing. It's not unusual for a bonefish to peel off five or six hundred feet of line on that first run, and a man begins to wonder if he'll ever stop. But now I can get hold of those reel handles and go to work. There's a lot of line out, though, and the fish is still strong. He's a powerful, stubborn fighter that hates to give up and I have to let him go again. You can't horse one of these fish, that's for sure. Now I've turned him and he's on the surface, the first sign that he's weakening. So I go to work on him, popping and reeling. Don't let him rest, keep him coming. That's the system. Now he's very tired and almost wet. But he gives it all he's got, dead game to the finish. I work him in close finally. And at last I have it. Eight pounds or more of blue and silver beauty. A solid torpedo-shaped battle that would make any angler proud. 
I remove the fly as quickly as carefully as possible so as not to injure it. Then I lower him into the water and he goes swimming away, glad to be free. I cast the bait over into the calm water close to the edge of the mangrove. And then sat down to wait for a tarpon to come along and pick it up. To some people, it seemed mighty peculiar the way Al would go away off fishing and never come home with any fish. He and Spudsy, that crazy pet fox of his, heading upstream in pursuit of a legendary big bass, a mythical monster known as Old Bronzebank. Trimmed up with a skirt, that spoon should prove a tantalizing lure. Try again, Al. You never can tell. Careful. That's a lot of fish. Yes, sir, old Bronzeback. The trophy he had sought so long. So, in the waters of Coon Creek, the legend lives. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Florida, the fishing capital of the world. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Rapala, Williamson Lures, Maverick Boats, Minn Kota, Humminbird, La Jolla Resort, Power Pole, Swift, Silent, secure. So, which one are you thinking about? I can't decide between Sumo and Gladiator. Well, Sumo has incredible balance thanks to his low center of gravity. Although, you can't go wrong with Gladiator. No one is braver or stronger than he is. I think you should choose Gladiator. I'll take Sumo. Rapala, Extreme Action x rap Extreme Netmen sold separately. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Just ask charter boat captain and tournament angler George Mitchell. No matter where I fish, I know I've got the strongest, most reliable outboard there is. For 25 years, Yamaha's innovative technology has produced the best outboards in the water. Tournament after tournament, win after win. The Yamaha F350. Power, reliability, and fuel efficiency. Yamaha. Because your best investment starts right here. Fish are gonna need a new place to hide. Exclusive side imaging from Humminbird. Scan more water faster with 480 feet of side-to-side -side coverage and see structure detail with amazing picture-like images. Humminbird. Simply, clearly, better. The new Riptide SF from Minn Kota. Its ruthless new mount features an anodized aluminum mono arm with uncompromising strength. A counter-tension stabilizer with no play and no give for whisper quiet operation. And lift assist for effortless stow and deploy. But it doesn't just sound tough. It's battle tested to help you tear through everything from heavy chop to corrosive salt water. Riptide SF. The assault on salt has begun. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and when I'm in the Florida Keys, I stay at the La Jolla Resort in Isla Mirada, a place for families and fishermen. The La Jolla is located on the bay at mile marker 82.2 and has easy access to the Everglades. The flats of Isla Mirada and the offshore reefs are just minutes away. The La Jolla Resort has great dockage, boat ramps, barbecue pits, and swimming pools. So whether your group is small or large, the La Jolla can take care of all your needs. Welcome back to Sportsman's Adventures. We're taking a look at some of the greatest old fishing films from the 50s. We're going to travel north to the Tamiami Trail and take a look at how they caught baby tarpon. After leaving the bonefish flats down in the Keys, we drove across the Tamiami Trail to Marco Island to try our luck for tarpon. I stopped alongside one of the canals a few miles from the Marco Island Inn to do a little fly fishing for baby tarpon which is great sport on a light fly rod. This looks like a good spot, so let's try it here. 
There they are, rolling on the surface just like their granddaddies. So I work out line and make my cast. I'm using a bass bug of the top popping type and baby top on Lovett. There should be some action mighty quick now. And one hits it. Man, these little fellows tried fast. And into the air he goes, two feet clear of the water. A top one is a real acrobat almost from the time he's hatched. Watch him jump. He's a real game fish, all right. This is fun, brother. And out he comes again. Only a couple of pounds, but he's a real scrapper, and he just stays in the air. Now he's about licked and ready to land. I ease him in and get hold of the leader, lifting him out very carefully over the roots and brush so as not to hurt him. We always release these little fellows, so we are very careful not to injure the lips or gills in removing the fly. He's a beautiful silvery little fish, perfectly formed, a perfect little tarpon. I mean to lower him gently into the water, but he doesn't want to wait, so he gives a flop and away he goes. There's another canal across the road, so we'll try it there. I use a roll cast because of the thick brush behind me. Then a backhand roll cast up the canal into a likely looking spot. Look out now. Wambo, another strike. He'll be in the air in a second. Watch him gleam there under the surface and out he comes. That's the great thing about a tarpon. He's air minded and loves to jump. fish could keep up that pace very long, so now he's all tired out, too weak to make a clean jump. See the bass bug there on his nose as he comes into the shallow water? After he's landed and released, I'll join Gail Borden again and try for this little fellow's great, great granddaddy. This bait was a silver mullet and just the right size. I cast the bait over into the calm water close to the edge of the mangroves and then sat down to wait for Tarpon to come along and pick it up. Something picked up the bait and the line began to run out. So I snapped on the brake and set the hook. It's a Tarpon all right and a buster, a really heavy fish. I knew that the minute I hit him. And does he throw spray? <laughs> oh boy. Now you've got a job ahead of you, Gail. Ha <laughs> ha, you ain't kidding, fella. Isn't that a beautiful jump? Six or eight feet clear of the water. Boy, those fish have power. I'm using a homemade rod that belonged to the guide and an old battered reel, but luckily I had a brand new Ashway line. And I hope plenty of it. Boy, that fish is going places. Yeah, he was hooked deep. Must have swallowed the bait so he can't throw the hook. And he sure is giving me a workout. Boy, look at that face twist and turn. This is just an old cane pole, but it had what it took. There he is again. Look at him twist and turn, brother. Some rod. <laughs> That's one rod you can call a pole. <laughs> yes, sir. There he is again. Well, it looks 
Looks like you're pitching in the lead now, Gail. Yes, sir, and you're getting a little over anxious with that gap up too, Dave. Sure, bring him to me, boy, bring him to me. I prefer this short release hook to a long-handled gap. I like the rope handle better. I can put the hook in the fish's mouth, set it, and let him rear. There isn't so much chance of getting hurt or knocked overboard as there is with a long-handled gap. Yeah, but you gotta get awful close with that little short handle hook. Oh, sure, but you don't try to gaff a fish until it's pretty thoroughly whipped like this one is. Even so, his mouth looks as big as a bushel basket. And boy, am I glad to get that strain transferred to old man New. <laughs> <laughs> Making pictures for Ashway is a lot of fun, all right. But it's work, too, when you have to tangle with fish of this size. I'll say it is. He's a beauty, though. By golly, there are three fish out there. They all see the fly, and here they come. And the middle one takes it. And he's hooked. Here we go again. Watch those coils come up off the bottom of the skiff. This Conservation Minute is brought to you by the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Do you dream of a career that would keep you on the water or in the woods every day? The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is looking for qualified men and women to join the nation's largest conservation law enforcement agency. As an FWC officer, you'll patrol Florida's coastal waters, rivers, and lakes, as well as our state's beautiful wooded areas. Officers also provide assistance to boaters, anglers, and hunters while enforcing state fishing, boating, and hunting laws. This special area of law enforcement is both challenging and demanding. Officer candidates undergo specialized classroom and field training to prepare for this unique career. Upon graduation, you'll join an elite law enforcement community. Now's the time to make your dream career a reality. For more information on becoming an FWC Wildlife Officer, contact the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, 1-866-FWC-HIRE, or visit myfwc.com. At Contender, We've specialized in building high-performance, top-quality, custom-made boats for more than 25 years. Contender has redefined what a fishing boat can be, and we are committed to producing the finest fishing boats in the world. And there has never been a better time to get a great deal on our entire line of Contender boats. Be sure to check out our new generation team models, the 27, 31, and 33, all available with optional forward seating. We're looking forward to welcoming you into the Contender family of boats. Patented in 2000, perfected over years of testing and real-world punishment, the PowerPole is the ultimate shallow water boat positioning tool. Swift, PowerPole deploys in seconds from anywhere in your boat. Virtually silent, PowerPole won't spook wary fish. Secure in strong current or gusting winds in up to 8 feet of water. Engineered to take it with a lifetime unconditional replacement guarantee on the spike. PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. Visit PowerPole.com to find a dealer near you. I've been fishing all my life and seen some pretty cool things on the water. I've seen a 180 pound tarpon jump in my boat. I've seen giant snook slam live bait. And I've also seen super shallow redfish I can easily pull to. I've seen a lot and a lot has changed except my boat builder, Maverick Boat Company. Make no mistake about it, Maverick makes the best technical polling skiffs, high speed backcountry skiffs and bay boats in the world. Hughes, Maverick or Pathfinder, number one for a reason. Hey there. Like your extreme net man? I love my sumo. How about you? Yeah. Wizard net man's awesome. Well, see you out there. Rapala. Extreme action X Rap. Extreme net men sold separately. Has your Florida fishing or hunting license expired and you need it renewed now? No problem. The FWC has several services that will allow you to buy your license instantly. No matter where you are, in the woods or on the water, all you need is a major credit card. For a small additional service fee, you can purchase these licenses directly online or simply by calling a toll-free number. To get your instant license online, log on to myfwc.com or call toll-free 1-888-FISH-FLORIDA or 1-888-HUNT-FLORIDA. Why is Yamaha your best investment? Just ask Captain Buddy LaPointe. In the charter business, I can't afford downtime. 
My Yamaha 150 four-stroke is the most dependable, trouble-free outboard I've ever run. This clean-burning, quiet, fuel-efficient Yamaha four-stroke is the most versatile outboard in the Yamaha lineup. So invest in the best, the clean, quiet, dependable Yamaha F-150. Yamaha, because your best investment starts right here. Welcome back to Sportsman's Adventures. We're going back to the Florida Keys. Now check out this old rare footage where legendary guide Jimmy Albright shows us how he fished for bonefish in the 1950s. Come along with me now down to the Florida Keys, to the little village of Isla Morada, some 70 miles below Miami. We turn off the overseas highway at a familiar sign, Captain Jimmy Albright, famous bonefish guide. I've been looking forward to this day for a long time, and I pull up alongside the coconut palms in front of the Albright's cheery home with keen anticipation for its perfect bonefish weather, clear and calm. Just the kind of a day when tailing bonefish can be seen a long way across the flats. Captain Jimmy's cruiser, the Rebel, lies ready in the slip, almost at the doorstep, and Jimmy is already aboard. He comes out to meet me. Hi there, fella. It's good to be back. Jimmy likes to operate his cruiser from topside, where he can watch for fish. So he climbs up, takes the wheel, slowly opens the throttles, and we ease carefully out of the rocky slip. Along with all bonefish guides, Jimmy likes to pull from the bow, traveling stern first. It's easier to handle the pull from the narrower bow, and the outboard is not in his way. We push toward the shallow flat, eyes peeled for signs of bonefish. And he has spotted one tailing close. Its dorsal fin and tail come clear out of water as it feeds lazily along. A very short cast will reach it if it just doesn't flush. It has seen the fly, it follows, and it takes. And once again, we see that terrific burst of speed as it feels the hook and goes away on that long run. He's off, not well hooked, I guess. Nothing broke, he just got off. So I work out another cast as we pull along to look for more fish. Anyhow, I had the big thrill, which is the strike and that express train speed of the first run, how these fish can travel. There's another single. Watch the mud spot as he digs. Looks like a puff of smoke. I make my cast trying to lay that fly close, but not too close. The splash of even that small fly landing over a fish will spook him. By golly, there are three fish out there. They all see the fly, and here they come. And the middle one takes it. And he's hooked. Here we go again. Watch those coils come up off the bottom of the skiff. If they should tangle the least bit, but they don't, and away goes the fish, streaking across the flat like a silver bullet. I hold that rod high to help keep the line from fouling on seaweed or coral, and to lessen the water friction, which is terrific as you can see. This fish makes a long, long run before I'm able to stop him. And even then, I have to let him go again. That reel is just too hot to handle. This fish is plenty strong. He's got plenty of speed left, and away he goes again, taking out still more backing. What a fish. Now I can stop him, or, or can I? Maybe. Yep, he's tired, and I'm able to turn him. Now to get back some line, but it doesn't come easy. No fish that swims fight harder for his size than a bonefish. That's my opinion, and I'll stand by it. At last, he's in close, but he's still trying. Game to the finish. What a powerful, streamlined fellow he is, a real fighter. Jimmy is all ready for him as I bring him toward the boat. Now he's very tired, almost through. Jimmy reaches for the leader, but no, not quite yet. Maybe this time, yeah. Jimmy reaches out, grabs the leader, slips his hand gently under the fish's belly, and carefully lifts it out. 
He unhooks the fly and we look over our catch. Notice the peculiar shape of the mouth. This one goes back to fight another day, and he's anxious to go. Jimmy watches him as he rests a few seconds close to the boat. Then he goes swimming away, very tired all right, but unhurt. Next time, maybe he'll be a wiser fish. We are tired too, but it's a good healthy weariness that gives a man a ravenous appetite and makes him sleep sounder than that little shark Jimmy grabbed a while ago. So we crank up to head for the big boat and the long trip home. We've had a lot of fun this day out on the Bonefish Flats. A man never forgets the gorgeous colors of the bay, the quiet of the open spaces, and all the things that are a part of fishing. These things are good for the soul. It was great looking back at how they caught fish in the 1950s. IGFA, I want to thank you for making this a great Sportsman's Adventures. Check out the Sportsman's Adventures website at www.sportsmansadventures.com. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick this Murphy. This is where you lose most fish, right here. So my job right here is to be ready to back off. If I get in trouble, it starts to take off. I'm going to just back the drag off. Sportsman's Adventures was brought to you by Contender Boats, Costa Del Mar, See What's Out There, ARCD Hookers, Trigger X, Suffix Lines, Hook and Tackle Sportswear, Loop Reels, The Fish Grip, Get Your Best Grip, Lumber Rock, The Last Deck or Dock You'll Ever Buy, Ameritrail, Custom Trailer Manufacturers, and by Screen Print Plus, when image matters.